and I don't mean in a rude way, but you claim you're an ex-Muslim, but was you even Muslim in the first place to say you was an ex-Muslim? <laughs> that was a flop. You're a fake ex-Muslim. I am? Yes, you're fake. What does that mean? You don't know Islam. Hmm? I don't? Yes, recite this surah right now. Okay. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan. Wait, is that the standard for judging someone's faith? No, but you used to be Ismaili. I used to be, sure, but I converted to Sunni and that's what I believe for most of my life. Liar? I'm not lying. Ask anyone that knew me. Check out my website such as, you had a weak faith. A true Muslim would never leave Islam. Really? I thought everyone's faith goes up and down. Aren't they Sahabi, companions of the Prophet that apostated? Were they fake ex-Muslims too? The reality is that faith goes up and down. Everyone has a different level of knowledge about the religion. You have people who don't know how to pray, all the way to those who have university level knowledge of Arabic studies and still leave Islam, like Hassan Radwan, or a friend of mine who studied at Medina. You'll find ex-Muslims pretty much representative of Muslims, which pretty much makes sense. But why is it that certain Muslims want to make it seem that all ex-Muslims are fake? Here, Farhan Qureshi and myself discuss it here. Okay, so about Ali Dawa, I mean, not just Ali Dawa, but the whole fake ex-Muslim thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there's two reasons for that. The first thing is they want to, you know what, they want to maintain this, this, um, illusion that nobody leaves Islam. They want to maintain this, this paradigm that Islam is a truth. There's millions of people converting every day. Even, you know, British, young, young British white women are converting, you know, because apparently they put those guys on the pedestal. And it's like, you, you can't leave Islam, right? And if you left Islam, obviously there must be something wrong with you because how do you leave the, the true religion of God, right? So I think that's what it is. It's part of the it's part of the way of spinning it in such a way that nobody can leave Islam because you were never really a Muslim in the first place. And you know, I think people leave Islam for different reasons. And you know, you might get some of those people that are young and you know they want to they want to party and this and that. But if you think about it, like who put us in a cage in the first place? Who enslaved us? Who told us you know life is supposed to be like that? And then, and then you want to like, you know, you have people in a cage and then you want to, you want to attack them because they want to leave the cage. Mm -hmm. Like really you, you want to complain because like they just want to live their life. Like that's, that's such a shameful thing. They just want to live their life. They just want to have a girlfriend. I just want to have a boyfriend. They just want to have a life. Like, okay. Yeah, they're such terrible people. Like, like shame on them for leaving Islam for that. Like, Yes, I think that, you know, there's a morality thing that appeals to a lot of people. I, I don't know about you, but to me, I just accepted that the way I looked at it was if Islam is true, the religion of God, then whatever it says, I have to accept. Now, how do I ascertain it's true? For me, I thought the Quran was true. And so I believed in it. I followed it and I practiced it. So I think when I ran into Ali Dava, I kind of, it became a problem for him because I didn't fit with his, uh, you know, what he was saying, right? And he couldn't call me a fake ex-Muslim, and he, like I knew, I knew my stuff. Right? I knew the Quran, and I, I could say that no, you're wrong. Like when he said fake ex-Muslim, and then he started calling someone else, you know, some other Muslim. Oh, you're not Muslim either. I just told him like, what about the hadith that says you shouldn't cut open people's heart, right? Like Osama bin Zaid, you know, the the beloved of Prophet Muhammad. Uh, they were fighting a war, and he killed someone, right? And he ran back and they ran, and just before they killed the guy, the guy's like, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. And the guy just killed him, right? They went back to the prophet and they told him he killed a man. And the guy said, la ilaha illallah. And Prophet Muhammad was angry and he said, you're going to kill a man who said, la ilaha illallah. And Osama bin Zayd is like, but he just said it. He just said it to save himself, right? And, and so the lesson for, Islam, for Muslims is you don't judge what's in people's hearts. You know what I mean? You accept them at face value. So this is something the Muslim community needs to... And I always knew that. I never used to judge people. If someone told me that a Muslim, I mean, you know, even if you don't think they're a Muslim, you just accept it. I mean, that's one of the Islamic values. But then you have people like Ali Dawa. It's part of his propaganda game, right? To go around calling people fake ex-Muslims, mocking, mocking ex-Muslims, you know, trying to to undermine, you know, the fact that yeah, people do leave Islam. Absolutely. I mean, you, what, based on those standards that, that, that you get, and the thing is, it's not just Ali Dawa, right? We get, we get comments all the time, 
these are these are people who are following through with what we can call the psychological defense mechanism in order to right. protect the ego, right? That they can't fathom that somebody will look at the religion of Islam and either A, say it's not for them, or B, actually study it and say, you know what, I don't believe that this is the truth behind reality. Right. For some reason, they can't fathom that. But the mo more important point, I think, is based on his standard, how many of the Muslims in the Muslim community and in these various masajid and in the overall population would be considered fake Muslims? Yeah, because I mean, nominal, I'm not nominal, but like the majority of Muslims, Christians, you know, they're not scholars in orthodoxy. They're not scholars of the religion. They're just, they're just committed Muslims. Like they may not, like the majority of people I talk to can't defend their faith, but that doesn't mean they don't believe in it. Mm -hmm. They believe in it very strongly and they're very they're committed to it they'll pray five times a day they'll go to the masjid right like if, if there comes a choice in their life where they have to choose between something haram and something halal you know they'll always go for the halal option like they strongly believe in islam and they want to become better muslims they may not they may not you know know all of the religious rulings or they may not know everything but at the same time it's it's yeah it's definitely that and by the way you asked me about the world ismaili thing mm -hmm. i hear that all the time you were never a Muslim because you were a smiley. And they, they just want to like cut out that like the rest of my life. They just like stop when I was like 16 or something and say, yeah, you were a smiley. Uh, buddy, like I ran an Islamic website for like 15 years and had over 4 million downloads on there. I created one of the biggest Quranic websites that's still in use to this day, um, worstbywordsquran.com. And like, like that just that doesn't show that I knew the religion. That just shows that I believed in it and I was committed to it, right? So, yeah, I mean, I think we people like me and you are, are you know trying to change the narrative now because the narrative the narrative cannot continue like this. Like it's just no. yeah. people that know Islam and speak about it now as ex, as 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 ex Muslims or my friend uh, Reason on Faith was also an ex Ahmadiyya just like yourself um, are, are really changing the game now, right? Totally. Uh, I mean, I, I don't think that there's a lot of people who have come out. Yeah, you know, I was looking to see how many, uh, you know, ex-Muslim YouTubers there are, and there's like less than a handful. And so, you know, there's 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 a few there's a way that more people can speak up. But I think that there's a lot of people who watch your videos and watch, you know, my videos and, uh, and the other ex-Muslims on there. And they're really looking for these voices to speak up for them because they don't have the confidence um, or bravery to do so. And so I think that there's going to be more and more people who are brave enough, um, who have the knowledge to be able to come on and, and uh, challenge the, the, these narratives. And it's just a matter of time. This is the millennial generation, bro. This is like yeah. the beginning of it. And the most of the people who are who are these traditionalists who want to hold on to the traditions, whether it's American traditionalism, right? Look at what happened. I don't want to get into politics, but look at what's happening all across the world. The traditionalists, the baby boomers who are on their way out are, you know, are basically struggling to keep their traditions alive. You know what I mean? And they're electing these politicians into office that will help preserve their their tradi their traditions whether it's french tradition american tradition muslim tradition uh arab tradition indian tradition the baby boomers like no we got to protect these traditions and i value tradition too obviously but uh, but tradition isn't the main thing that we have we also have science we have logic and um and there's there's multiple ways to look at the nature of reality uh you know, considering all the information that we have, you know, in, in terms of, uh, you know, the websites that you ran, Light Upon Light, I definitely be benefited from that website um, uh, yeah. online. As a matter of fact, when I came out with my video, My Journey from Islam to Hinduism, I used a video of Bilal Phillips and it has Light Upon Light <laughs> written on the, as, on the bottom as a, you know, that this is where the video is from. So that's, that was pretty cool. I uh, know, but I definitely benefited a lot from your website. I I, I know that you were, uh, you know, you genuinely believed in the Muslim narrative, and now you don't. Yeah. And you know what? Another thing that I want to say before I get your insight is what's interesting is that Ali Dawa was an Alawi. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know too much about the kid. I do know that, 
And so he's still young. I don't know how old he is. And granted, even if he gets married, married, the idea is that if reality happens to hit in the future and he leaves Islam, was he never a Muslim? Yeah. And that, that, yeah. that possibility is there because look at Yasser Qadi and look at, I just want to use Yasser Qadi and Hamza Yusuf as an example of how they shifted. Granted, they didn't leave Islam, but you look at them from where they were in the beginning to where they are now, they're completely different people. Yeah. They're completely, even Shabir Ali would not, I, I would not say some of the things that he says now that he, you know, he, that he wouldn't have said those things 10 years ago. I wouldn't have heard that. Do check out the full discussion linked below. And finally, if you're enjoying this content, please consider supporting me. Monthly support allows me to plan my efforts and gives me a financial base that I can use to spend more time and energy on this project. Currently, I have just around 30 monthly supporters out of the thousands that watch my video. Please help me to increase this number. Thank you for watching. This is Abdullah Samir signing out.